Josh Friedman of We Are Change outside Bilderberg 2024 in Madrid, Spain, where today I am joined by the one and only Charlie Skelton. Charlie is a writer and a journalist and just had a piece about Bilderberg published in The Guardian. Charlie, how are you doing? Thank you for joining us. It's nice to be here in sunny Madrid. I'm very pleased to see that your piece is out. It's Any nice. initial reaction to... Relief. Yeah, uh, it's just, you know, a, a bit of publicity, a bit of mainstream publicity again. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just relieved to see it in print, well, in digital form. For those who don't know you, you've appeared on this channel quite a few times. Uh, how long have you been covering Bilderberg and maybe very briefly, what got you into this? Um, well, I, my first rodeo was in 2009, which was in Vuligmany. In, in Greece, and that was, I was completely nuts. It was, uh, you know, every time I get slightly shouted at by a policeman, which happened this morning, um, I just think back to Vulik Mania, which was so much worse by an order of magnitude. I mean, I was constantly being detained. I was taken to the police station, shouted at by a ring of a dozen policemen, and uh, they made my life so miserable there that I got in a cab and got went to Athens half an hour away and then it got worse and uh so yeah I was I was kind of um radicalized is the wrong word but you know I went there thinking oh this will be a bit of a bit of a laugh and I left you know sort of a trembling wreck having tried to tried to get into the embassy the, the British embassy and uh, it turns out the chat on on Sunday so you know I was expected to be sat down and given a cup of tea and there eh, oh Mr Skelton um there there <laughs> you poor dear. And yeah, no, nothing. Yeah, that hasn't quite been the case. And I guess I'd have to say thank you for sticking up for other journalists who've come and in somewhat similar fashion on the outside received some nasty treatment, harassment. There's been a little bit of that this year. Maybe we'll get into that in a bit. Yeah. But I'd like to ask you, now that we have uh, witnessed the passage, the passing of Henry Kissinger at the age of 100 last year. After he attended, he yeah. was here right around the time of his 100th birthday. Kissinger has long, 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 had long, long, long been a Bilderberg participant. And to some extent, maybe the face of the organization. He's no longer here. What is the significance of that? And maybe the significance of that at the 70th anniversary meeting that's taking place right now? Well, um, first of all, I, I did do a Henry Kissinger joke in the piece that got published, but they cut it out. Uh, Shame on which, the guard. Which, <laughs> which I have to say, you know, the, it's a very, very light touch of censorship. Okay, very light. They just take out the odd joke. Um, but uh, no, I, 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 I wrote about how Henry Kissinger finally gave up his grip on life after he listened to the, the voices calling him come towards the darkness. Um, but they cut that out. But I thought that was quite nice and sort of poetic. Anyway, I think that's a nice little touch of humor in yeah. a difficult subject matter. <laughs> yeah. But uh, um, so, yes, Kissinger was the kind of ideological heart of Bilderberg for decades. You know, he, um, he's been described as holding court there by people who've witnessed it from the inside. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, he's definitely obviously left a a big ideological app, you know, hole in the middle of Bilderberg. And I guess there's a, a group of people jockeying to, to fill it. Um, a couple of those people, you, I must credit you, have been talking for years about former Google head Eric Schmidt and Peter Thiel, who's somewhat of a rival of his, potentially jockeying for power, jockeying for influence within Bilderberg. Do you still see it that way in 2024? And now that Kissinger is no longer with us? Totally. I mean, I see those three, uh, so Alex Karp, Peter Thiel and Schmidt, um, as very much a kind of uh, no ideological node in, I mean, they probably see themselves as incredibly different from each other. Um, but uh, um, what the three have in common is that they like to, you know, editorialize. They like to, they'd like to talk about their positions, their philosophies of, of life and business and, and geopolitics. And so, you know, they're, they're all three of them very like Kissinger in that way. They, you know, they, they, they'll just, they just talk about it all the time. 
you know, so it makes it kind of that it makes them more interesting, I think, to to, to talk about. You know, so I mean, if you went onto the Founders Fund uh, website, which is that's Peter Thiel's investment vehicle, and he lists all the companies he's um, invested in, and then he has he sort of they have sort of more philosophical pieces about you know what is technology and what you know what 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 is the future of business etc etc all they you know they 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 have think pieces on on a on a sort of venture capitalist website so he's an interesting character he, you know he he's also got um fingers in a lot of pies that are you know significant so you know he's he's an early investor in lots of things so the guy um Palmer Lucky who's the Oculus VR inventor um who then has gone into defense, as a lot of the tech people seem to. So he got his early funding from Peter Thiel. And you noted that in the piece, right? Yeah, yeah. And, um, uh, uh, you know, obviously Palantir. So he's still the biggest shareholder of Palantir, Peter Thiel. There's also the financial services uh, transaction company Stripe. And um, one of the board members is Mark Carney, the former... Uh, governor of the Bank of England, who I saw and jogging ba- earlier. And the Bank of Canada. And the Bank of Canada. And he's just been made recently uh, um, chairman of Bloomberg. And the editor-in-chief of Bloomberg is in here. Uh, Micklethwaite. Yeah, so um, it's all very, very clear. They, they like kind of appointing each other to things. And if you look, you can cross-refer people from, you know, board to board to advisory committee to... Like Nadia Shadlau is on the International Advisory Board of Santander, the Executive Chairman of Santander. Anna Bertin is in here. She's the host this year. So, you know, it's every, it's, it's, it's very, you know, you know, all those drawings people do with Bilderberg in the middle of things. You can do that kind of inside Bilderberg, one of those drawings. All in the family type of thing. But I think the, the web extending from Peter Thiel is very evident yeah. this year. Obviously, Carp has been on the the steering committee. I guess at this point, maybe he's no longer an underlink per se of Teal, but Teal brought the managing director. I'm saying brought loosely, but Teal brought the managing director of Teal Capital this year. Uh, Harrington, I believe, is his name. Oh, right, he, yeah, he? he's he's on he the is. list. He's on the list. You, yeah, okay. you already you already brought out some of the venture Teal venture capital connections I here so that. i mean it's yeah I, mm. I i yeah he's on the managing director of teal capital is, okay. is he's on the list so it seems like in this now post kissinger era yeah. the the web around peter teal is expanding and expanding yeah, he's making a play definitely because there was a, a few years ago google was very dominant for like a couple of years and they uh i think it was in Turin, i think it's like half of google's kind of uh, yeah around tech crew were just there you know around the late 20 teens google yeah, google, yeah that google web was really people, expanding but people are talking about google bird uh you know. demis hasibus he's yeah. he's back right yeah yeah he's, he's come he's come many you yeah. want to say who he is yeah the ceo of google well now google deep mind yeah. it was deep mind and his former co-founder uh suleiman is in here so he's now president of ai at microsoft and microsoft is quite is is Moving, you know, in the, on the kind of Bilderberg dial of various companies, Microsoft is going out. And in your piece, you connected AI to the defense field or what's going on right now with warfare, the future of warfare, which is a topic. One of the key topics this year is the future of warfare, which is yeah. probably uh, pretty fitting given what's going on in the world. Um, we do have presumably... The head of NATO, Jens Stoltenberg, inside. He yeah. comes year after year. You mentioned that Dutch Prime Minister, outgoing Dutch Prime Minister, Mark Ruda, is somewhat tabbed to be his successor. Yeah. So there are very interesting and significant military storylines surrounding this conference. Do you want to get into yeah. any of that? Well, just to mention to you, and again, I remember seeing from another hotel room, looking down on the top of the Fiat building, because uh, the the Agnelli uh, crew were hosting it, and um, uh, we could see Stoltenberg de- delivering a keynote speech to the to, you know in a kind of big tent that built to the, the the sort of the mass participants of Bilderberg. So um, yeah, he kind of comes. The 
who, the Secretary General traditionally comes to Bilderberg, and Stoltenberg, you just can't keep him away. Um, I was kind of hoping to see him this morning jogging, but because it's it's quite a sight. He goes jogging with about twelve bodyguards, and he must have hustled over here because he had a NATO meeting in Prague yesterday, I believe, with foreign ministers. Right. Yet he quickly flew over here. I, I guess. Well, I mean, if he, he's easy to spot coming in because it's a it's a big motorcade of of uh, you know of we, security. Personnel. We we've seen some significant motorcades, including uh, Thursday evening, uh, Felipe the Sixth, yeah. the King of Spain, came here. Do you find that notable? Well, you got the shot so far of the of the conference. It's and it's. I was talking about. Um, I was talking about that photo on to someone, and and, and the, I think the interesting thing about it is, just getting the photo, raises. It, it just brings everything to life. You know, it's like not I mean, for a start, we wouldn't really know who it was in the car, um, but even just the, the participants. If you get a photo, it kind of makes you kind of go. Even though you see a name on a piece of paper, you go, "Oh, it's real. They're really here. Oh, yeah, look there they are." And um, so that's why. It's so important that, you know, you guys and we're all here with our cameras, you know, and uh, it's every little, every little helps. But, you know, the, the fact that you were able to get a shot that identified the king kind of just allows us to talk about that as a news story, you know, which it is. You know, the king's come to the to to this conference and it's it, again, it just brings everything up a notch. So, um, and that, well that, done you. Per, thank you, thank you. That, that presumably makes two kings at this conference. As yeah, yeah. The Dutch a king, pair of kings. Dutch a pair of kings. There you go. Dutch king is on the list as he often is. Uh, it's been a little bit challenging, as we alluded to earlier. A little bit challenging of a year for journalism on the outside of the conference. Yeah. I, <laughs> as you mentioned, it's pro probably life is not too difficult inside for the editor in chief of uh, Bloomberg, the Economist, uh, yeah, um, etc. There, there's a lot of a lot of journalists inside this year. I think a lot of a lot of uh, editors and and uh, media owners. I mean, I think noticeably. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, and it's it's slightly galling, you know, when you we, we have you know we're confined to this little hot patch of pavement here and, and god forbid you tread over that yeah, line if you can pan the camera ever so slightly this is literally if, if we had an argument about if we cross line, out yeah. of if we cross out of our zone our, 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 free, free our freedom zone. of the press zone <laughs> the police kind of pounce on us yeah so i had a i had a few crosswords this morning um with um a policeman and it was you know i i find it very difficult to believe that one person standing outside Three feet to the side of a of a piece of pavement is is a problem, but a security problem. But it turns out it was, and we had a disagreement about that. And anyway, but you know, there've been good and bad inter interactions with the police this year. Some very bad, and you know, there was some a pair of Dutch journalists who uh, were extremely distressed and upset by being harangued by a by four plainclothes policemen in a cafe up there, and they just left and went back to uh, to Holland. So. Um, you know, there's, I, it always, when, when you, things like that, when it's made difficult for journalists out here to the point of pe have people actually becoming, you know, um, completely disillusioned with being here and having to leave, you know, that's when I kind of feel a sense of sort of, not anger, but just like sort of disappointment towards the journalists who are in there because, you know, I don't know what they think they're doing. I really don't. It'd be nice to have a conversation with them. Last year, uh, myself and some others ran into on the outside a whole group of them that included uh, Matthias Dufner yeah. of Actual Springer. Um, who else? Who's a um, journalist himself by training? Who, yeah, who actually, he, he possibly conducted the very final interview with Kissinger, right? Good. Yeah, right before Kissinger's death. Wow. Yeah, uh, Duffner interviewed him, and it was right after the events of October 7th, and Kissinger made some interesting remarks, uh, which, by the way, Luke Rudowski has spoken about in multiple videos on this channel. Uh, yeah, but we ran into Zanny Minton Bedos, editor-in-chief yeah. of The Economist, Micklethwaite of Bloomberg. Yeah. So yeah, we, we do see them come out from yeah. time to time, but uh, it has not been 
the easiest environment this year, covering it on the outside for multiple no. reasons. I wouldn't say the policing has been as aggressive as what no. was done to you in Greece or done to some others. Australia and, was worse, but yeah, you know, it's it's mixed. It is mi- This year is a very mixed bag. Uh, but Charlie, thank you very much for being here. I know it hasn't been so easy for you to get here, to get published. Uh, where can people read your piece and where can people follow the rest of your coverage from Bilderberg 2024? Well, the, the Guardian's website is hopefully got it slapped right on the front. Uh, we'll see. Um, so yeah, the Guardian's website, uh, but also I'm on Twitter. Any, if you just put hashtag Bilderberg, you'll find everything that's being said, I'm sure. Um, we will we will link your Twitter below, but your handle is at Deuk. I don't know why. D e y double o k. I never thought I'd have to say that out loud. You know, <laughs> just some, like I some just, random. I like saying at Deuk, but uh, yeah, it's stupid. It's an interesting handle. Yeah. Um, so yes, that's that's what I'm tweeting under, uh, and uh, and yeah. no one is censoring your humor on at Deuk. Let's hope well, not. I hope I mean, not. I don't know. I don't know how I'm on the dial of uh, getting seen, whether I'm up or down. You know, that applies to everyone. Potentially, potentially. Yeah. But no, no one's actually saying, tapping me on the shoulder. But uh, anyway, so, um, but, um, you know, we're hoping to get some more shots and, you know, tweet out some more pictures. Thank you very much. And uh, for everyone tuning in, thank you. Please follow our continued coverage of Bilderberg 2024 on wearechange.org, youtube.com slash wearechange. And please sign up to lukeunfiltered.com, where we also have exclusive behind-the-scenes reports, including in-depth reporting from the past two Bilderberg conferences that includes footage of some of the confrontations and interviews that have been mentioned in this video. Thank you again for watching and stay tuned.